The bottom piece is printed in this orientation. No supports are needed for this. It prints great without supports. This piece gets printed in this orientation. And again, no supports are necessary. The mounting plate gets printed like this. No supports, but a brim is needed if you don't have great adhesion. It might tend to peel up on this side and at the point here. What's up everybody? Chris Roma here, AKA Roma Aquatics with another 3D printer hot end build. This one is for the Stealth Burner with the Micro Swiss Direct Drive Extruder on the Ender 5 Plus. Um, it is obviously only the cooling parts from the Stealth Burner as the extruder is the Micro Swiss Direct Drive System and not the Clockwork 2 Direct Drive System that you'd normally build with the step or a stealth burner. Um, first, let's get into it. I'll describe what I got sitting here. First of all, I took apart the hot end already. Uh, you can see it sitting on the shelf back there. I went ahead and pre-cut the wires. I cut off the blower, my, cut off the blower motor for the part cooling fan. So there's a blue and a yellow wire sticking out there that I already pre-stripped. We will take a closer look at that in a minute. Uh, the BL Touch is just hanging here if you have one, and the hot end cooling fan is just hanging here at the moment. Um, we have a 5015 fan here uh, that the cover just came off of. I'll explain more about that in a moment. A, this piece um, is the bottom part of, from the V6. Uh, the rear part from the V6 on the Voren Design website and I modified it slightly, uh, just cleared out the channel here to make it more uh, appropriate for the Micro Swiss and I added some um, sink holes here to attach to the mount that we have here. Uh, so this is a custom mount I made. Um, this screw and this screw came um, with the stock carriage. They were the ones that were in this hole and that hole. Um, and we're gonna reuse them. And then this is for the BL Touch. And these two holes are where we use these two. Um, I think these are 16 or 18 millimeter M3 screws that we're gonna use to attach the, uh, we're gonna use to attach that to the mount. This piece is the stock um, front for the Stealth Burner, no modifications at all, and I used number six uh, one and a half inch screws here just because that's what I had on hand, and these are half inch number six screws that are basically just there for decoration, so you don't really need those, uh, but these are needed. You could probably get away with uh, one inch screws on these um, and not inch and a half. You might cut them down later. We'll decide how I feel later. Uh, but first step, I'll, I guess I'll describe the fan. Um, so the first thing you're going to want to do is take the cover off this fan. There's three little clips that hold the cover on. I obviously already cut them off. I took my trusty blue snips here and I just cut those clips off. Snip, snip. The cover came right off. Um, these ears or whatever you want to call them, these little nubbies, um, were on this part too. Um, so when you take this off, you'll have those nubbies there and you got to cut them off. Um, so what I did to cut them off was I did, I just stuck the clips in the hole, cut, stuck to the other hide, cut here. I might as well just do it on here. Um, but you could cut, comes off nice and easy. And then you kind of just trim it down, trim it down, and you keep trimming it down until it's nice and flat and you get something that looks nice and flat like that. And all I used was my snips to get that on both sides. You want to trim that down. This is a 5015 fan, hydraulic bearing. I got it on Amazon, a four pack for like uh, around 10 bucks, I think it's 24 volts. That's about it for the fan. So, well, I pre-cut the adapter piece off and I pre-stripped them and that's where we're going to attach the red wire to the yellow wire up here and the black wire 
to the blue wire over here. And more about that later. This that fan fits in the top piece here. Um, as you can see, there's a channel, two channel. There's one channel that goes to each side, and the way the fan fits in, it just kind of fits in right there. It snaps in nicely, and then the wire can run down the side channel here and feed it however you'd like. So for the next part, we're gonna put the mount on and the mount is nice and easy to put on. You don't even need to take the hot end off. So all we're gonna to need to do, it's easy if you put the screws in like that already, you just turn it sideways, slide the whole thing right behind that Capricorn tubing and then turn it back the way you want. And this screw is gonna go into that hole next to that uh, belt attachment there. And then this screw is gonna go into that top hole in the corner there. The screws are in. I also went ahead and put the BL Touch on. I made sure I had my BL Touch router, or BL Touch wire routed uh, behind the Capricorn tubing as well, just for neatness. And now I'm going to go ahead and this little channel on the side here <clears throat> is meant uh, for the thermistor and the cartridge, heater cartridge wire to kind of fit nicely up the side there. On the original stealth burner, there's a piece that fits and encloses it on. Unfortunately, the Micro Swiss is a little bit closer to the mount um, than the V6 and the other. Um, the other hot ends must be because I couldn't, I wasn't able to fit uh, that piece on here and I had to just remove it, but it's not a big deal because like I said, the hot ends closer, so there was no need for it. But basically what we're going to do here is we're just going to fit this right on here nicely. It just slides in nice, goes right under there and then you screw it on. Once those pieces are secure, we're ready for the next step, which is attaching the wires for the fan. For that step, you're going to need to strip the blue and yellow wires that we cut the original part cooling fan off. Leave yourself plenty of wire on that. Leave yourself plenty of wire on this one when you cut the adapter off and strip that. We're also going to need a well soldering gun and a heat gun and some heat shrink if you do it this way. That's the way I'm going to do it. So basically I'm going to solder the wires and then put some heat shrink on here. Don't forget to add it to the wires before you solder and then shrink it with the heat gun. Um, just twisting the wires together and adding some electrical type will do just fine. Basically any way to attach those wires together and keep them insulated will do just fine. So you have something that looks like that with the red wire going to yellow and the black wire going to the blue. The fan, hot end fan just dangling there and the part cooling fan attached in the stealth burner. So the next part we're gonna do is we're gonna put this fan into the front end here. And this little channel here can be used for this wire here. And the easiest way I've done found to do this is sticker facing us. You put the top end in there and it fits kind of nicely and then very gently wiggle that down and in. And it just slides in very, very nicely. And now what you can do is you can take a couple M3 screws, little short, maybe 12 millimeter M3 screws and put them in there and there and it holds that fan in. And don't forget to put this wire up in this channel or it makes it very difficult to snap that on there. So if you're having difficulty snapping it on, check to make sure that this wire stayed in that channel. This is what I have after I ran the wires. It kind of tucks in back over here, not too tight because you don't want it to get in the way of that vent system. So make sure it's tucked in nice and tight back there, snakes through there and up through this clip. And then this wire you can kind of bring down the side here and down through this clip. And we'll put on some zip ties and do some wire management afterwards. All that's left is to put the cover on and tighten up those screws. Once you get those screws tightened and a little bit of wire management, your stealthy swish should be printing like a dream. 
Hope yours works as well as mine. Do not forget to set your Z offset and your X and Y probe offsets. My X and Y probe offsets are negative 45X and negative 7Y. And my Z offset is 2.02, but your numbers may differ, especially your Z offset, depending on how you level your bed. Roma Aquatics, out.